What is going on, everyone? Hey, sorry I can't be there today. Um, I'm not feeling well at all. And uh, my voice isn't doing so well, so this should be interesting. But I didn't want to go a whole day without reading, so this might be five minutes, this might be ten minutes. It just depends on how well my voice holds up, but at least we can get a little reading in. You know, I believe that uh, reading is super important. I'm sure you probably don't care, but um, we'll get a, a little bit of reading in. So since we can't have that class discussion, I'm not there. Um, I'll do it really quickly for us. So yesterday when we read, we talked about how Sawyer is seeing the vision. We learned a little bit about his vision. It does involve gunshots. It involves 11 bullets at least and some bodies i don't i don't remember if it was 11 too bad uh i can't ask you was it 11 bodies but definitely um gunshots and the the last question we had was well if he doesn't know anyone would he should he risk his life you know if does he have to fly to try to save somebody risk his own life we'll, we'll see here we'll get more information so in the yellow in the evening while everybody's still down in the restaurant and i'm stuck doing mountains of worksheets and makeup quizzes that didn't come home with one of my sibs my mind wanders to it again i pull out the cell phone wondering if sawyer is working wondering if he slammed her if maybe he has time to talk I start pressing the numbers I know by heart, but hardly ever get to use, thanks to my father. And the phone's address book recognizes them and brings up Sawyer's name with a, you can see that little heart next to it. Maybe emojis weren't invented yet. I smile and look at it for a minute. And then I press the call button. It rings a few times and I cringe. It's probably busy. Hey, comes his breathless voice. Why is it that every time I talk to him, I feel like my brain won't work? It takes me a full second to form the word hi in response. Are you slammed? Nope, he says. I just got back to the car, delivered my last pizza for the night. How's your new phone? Top of the next column. Love it, I say. Now notice right here, there are no, um, man, I forgot what these are called, uh, quotation marks. No quotation marks there, so she's not saying it out loud. We can only hear her. Everybody else is still downstairs, but if I hang up quickly, you'll know why. I'll always assume a quick click means the proprietors are coming, and not that you're mad or something. He teases. Oh, I'll let you know if I'm mad. There's a smile in his voice. I do not doubt that. As long as every now and then you still drag me out of bed in the middle of the night to tell me you're sorry I'm going to die and tell me that you... He doesn't say it. I don't know what to say. What do you think he was going to say there? Maybe like, I love you or something like that. Okay, so we get a long paragraph of when you actually say that to another person. The the whole I love you thing. You know, maybe kind of an important, important piece here. When you tell a guy you love him before you're in a relationship with him, does it mean you love love or just love? And what words do you use after you start the relationship? You can't say I love you after a first kiss. I don't care who it's with. That screams of one of those crash and burn relationships half the school is in. I think I'm going to have to go back to saying like for a while at least. Anyway, he says in the awkward pause. Anyway, I agree. So um, I thought about your question. Me too. I guess all I can say is that I don't think, top of the next column, I don't think you have to risk your life for strangers. And I stop there. Even though there's so much more I have to say and want to say. He's quiet for a long moment. What do you think will happen if I don't try to save them? The vision will get stronger and more frequent and you'll see it everywhere. You might not be able to drive. I was really struggling there at the end. I'm so sorry. Don't. It's really okay. I never expected you to believe me. I pause, listening for footsteps on the stairs, but all is quiet. The main thing you need to get through is 
to remember it'll end eventually. I don't think I read that correctly, but close enough. How do you know that for sure that it'll end? This question stops me. Um, because it ended for me, I say weekly. Yeah, but you did what it wanted you to do. He says, will my vision still end if I don't do what it wants? Uh, I guess I don't actually know. I think about it, wondering if I'd still be tormented by the vision today if I hadn't stopped the crash. If I'd have to look at Sawyer's dead face in the body bag until the end of time. And for whatever reason, I think about my dad in his own apparently tormented life. But Sawyer interrupts my thoughts. All right, if I uh, wasn't in my bathrobe and in bed and uh, reading this, I might put the camera on my face, but uh, I'm not going to do that. You don't need to see that. But we did talk about that quite a bit last in the last book. It's like, is that why her dad is so like messed up? Like maybe he saw the vision, he didn't stop it, and then he sees it all the time. That could be one reason he stays in his room so much. Who knows? So maybe there's a little bit more pressure on Sawyer to um, stop this vision. Now, Jules could risk telling her father, like, hey, you know, I don't know how you start that awkward conversation with your dad, someone that does have the power to kind of like put you in a hospital. Like, hey, um, do you see visions? Is that why you're so weird? You know, I don't think you can have that uh, conversation easier said than done. Really. All right. The next, uh, top of the next column here, it's getting worse. He says, as I'm driving around doing deliveries, it's showing up on street signs. I frown. Any new scenes? Not so far. Uh, I'm going to try to watch some TV tonight to see if the vision shows up there. Try to rewind slow motion thing. Like you said, I feel helpless. I sigh heavily and say, I'm just so sorry about this. So you can imagine she still feels guilty. She had the vision first. I mean, she literally gave it to him. I don't know who gave me this cold if this is what it is, but um, I'm not happy with that person. Uh, I'm going to take a COVID test just in case. because I've been dealing with this for like a week. Anyways, not about me, about Jules and Sawyer. They have bigger problems. Yeah, well, I blame you, of course. I afford a small smile. But I can't help it. I feel responsible. This is happening because of me. And it's like bodies and bodies. 11 gunshots? Holy blank. So you aren't going to try to stop the shooting then. The words come out strained because I've already made my decision on what has to happen if he decides not to save anyone. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to save them myself. He's quiet. Jules. He says finally. Sounding a little hurt. Do you really think I could do that? I volunteer at the freaking Humane Society, you know? How could I not possibly, how could I possibly not try to save 11 people from some crazy gunman? My heart floods with, with relief. I, I didn't think you would or could. I just didn't want you to think, top of the next column, I'd blame you for hoping to try and make it go away. Well, he says, Whatever controls this vision thing sure knows how to pick the right people to get the job done. I hear a door shut at the bottom of the stairs and my heart races. Gotta go, I say in a hushed whisper. But I'm with you on this. Thank dog for that, he says. And we hang up. Eleven blanking gunshots. And his vision is getting worse. I feel like I'm gonna puke. All I know is that we gotta get moving on this thing now. <coughs> All right, chapter seven. Good place for us to stop. We got uh, a little bit of reading in, at least. What was it almost 10 minutes of reading? So um, for the rest of the class, um, there is on Google Classroom another 11-minute video or so about North Macedonia. That is the first of the six republics we'll talk about. So you get a little bit of information there. Remember, don't, you know, you don't have to take notes on this. You don't have to try to remember everything. Just kind of let it wash over you so you get a little bit better understanding of this area we call the Balkans. And then we'll start talking about how these different groups of people have, like, 
over the years have uh, kind of had smaller genocides against each other. The the Croats had it against the Serbs at one time, and the, the Serbs will get revenge. That's the one we're going to talk about. So, and then after that, uh, take the rest of the time, finish up quarter three work and uh, all that stuff. And uh, I hope I see you tomorrow. All right. Adios, amigo.